Welcome and thank you for joining us. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. On the program today, we're going to be approaching a subject that many of us listen to constantly on the news and wonder really what is going to be happening. On the one side, we keep hearing pundits and people tell us, well, you know, we're kind of pulling out of the recession and things should get better. Jobs seem to be looking on the horizon to be a lot better than they have been. And then on the other side, we tell or are told anyway that we need to be digging in our heels because things are about to get a lot worse. On the program today, we're going to be joined with someone who's been a stockbroker since 1960 but retired in 1988, which is a lot of years to really be in the market and understand exactly what goes on when it comes to finances. At one time, he was the largest shareholder or owner of gold shares in the world. He's joining us here on the program today to talk with us about what's really going on and what we can really anticipate or expect anyway uh, when it comes to this money global world market. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today our guest, Mr. Bob Chapman. Bob, thank you for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program. Well, it's very nice to be here. And uh, our work uh, is cut out for us in trying to save what we've saved all of our lives, and it's not easy. <laughs> you know, we have lots of things going on throughout the world, and that's why I publish the International Forecaster, so that people uh, a couple of times a week on <clears throat> email can keep up with exactly what's going on all over the world. Mm-hmm. You know, I was uh, reading a good portion of uh, uh, your newsletter uh, last night, and it was really uh, quite fascinating what you had to uh, say on there because you don't tend to hear most of this really when it comes to mainstream media. It seems what, what we hear of is a lot of fluff. And and I think that really especially a, a fair amount of the American people are looking at this going, you know, we're really getting tired of you sitting here, you know, saying one thing when we know that there's really something going on or maybe you just don't really know. What is your take on all this? Well, the major media media worldwide is controlled by uh, people behind the scenes, usually the banking and brokerage industry, uh, to underscore them, transnational corporations, so you get what they want you to hear. Mm -hmm. And the news I don't want to talk about at all, I just don't talk about, and you don't know anything about it. And so that's why 23 years ago we uh, decided to start uh, the publication, the International Forecaster, so that we could tell people every week, look, this is what's really going on over here, and this is what's behind it. And uh, there's very few publications in the world that have been right 98% of the time that you can go and pick up and find out what's going on out there. And, of course, for my part, I've been <clears throat> involved in uh, investment uh, and also other things throughout the world uh, over my 76 years. And I also have lived in many countries for extended periods of time and speak their languages. And so I have a, uh, a, a reflection to what's going on that very few others have, except perhaps uh, journalists who are right on the scene, and sometimes they don't even catch it. Ah, interesting. I know, uh, as I was saying, I was reading a, a good portion of your newsletter last night, and one of the alarming things was a quote that you had in there, from uh, former President Woodrow Wilson, back with the sinking of the Titanic. And, you know, today it seems to sort of echo that same sentiment that somewhere there's this underlying power that almost seems, uh, I don't know, ethereal, if you will, that really is bent on being sure that things turn and bend and become the way they want them. As you discussed in your newsletter, it was a a goal for a one-world government. Taking a look at that perspective, how does that help these people who are trying to make this happen? Uh, They have as much money and power as they want. They want total control. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've spent over 50 years studying what they've done in the past, going back thousands of years. And it's uh, one evolutionary process after another of total control. And they do it, they're at it again. Mm-hmm. And each time they do it, they also take the financial markets down, whether it was in 70 A.D. or yesterday. And in that process, they force people or try to force them to accept governments that they really don't want. And very often that leads to revolutions. 
and very often the people who have perpetrated this get killed as well as others. So it's a risk they take because they believe that <clears throat> world government is the best thing for humanity because they know that in their own mind's eye that they know what's good for the public and the public doesn't know what's good for itself. And so based on that, there are groups of people who through the centuries, and particularly today, work in conjunction with one another to form world government. And incidentally, if you don't understand that and you don't look at this concept of why things happen and you can trace them all, if you don't do that as a professional, as a journalist, you can never come up with the right conclusions, never mind the public. Huh, fascinating stuff. You know, and here just recently, somewhat, you know, all of a sudden Greece came in the picture. <laughs> you know, people are like, well, Greece, what in the heck do they have to do with anything here? But talk about how that really is in play, especially when it comes to, as I understand it, the euro, which seemed to be an experiment that is not really working so well is about to go down the camp. What's going on there? Well, uh, over two years ago, I started to appear on Greek radio and television and in the press, and like I had in many other countries. And I told them, look, you should have never gotten the euro in the first place, and you deceived the people in the euro in getting in by uh, falsifying your books, with the help of Goldman Sachs, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, now you've got an unpayable debt. So what you do is you default, you go back to the drachma, and you reduce its value by 50% versus the euro, and you put your house in order, uh, lay off whom you have to to cut back expenses and, and get your country going again. You'll go through uh, a recessionary, de- uh, a, uh, a deflationary depression probably for four or five years maximum. And then you'll be okay again. And so uh, nobody was listening. Uh, I think that's what's going to happen now. And in Greece, as small as it is, is a catalyst because once one country leaves the Eurozone, and mind you, in their uh, two treaties, the Maastricht Treaty and the Lisbon Treaty, uh, Treaty, there's no way to get out. They forgot to put in there that if you wanted to leave what procedure would you take? Well, there is no procedure. But with that said, uh, I talked to people in the German government a couple of years ago, and I said, you look at a $4 trillion to bail out these six countries. And they said, oh, no, it's a trillion. Well, about three months ago, I raised it to $6 trillion, and they raised it to $3.5 trillion. Nobody can pay it. Nobody can come up with that kind of money because they all got their own problems, and the European economy is turning down three months in a row uh, manufacturing orders, uh, orders in Germany have fallen, and 50% of their business is done with France, so that means their orders have fallen, and they got a problem, mm-hmm. uh, an, an economic problem of a fading, we'll call it, recessionary economy now. Well, you put that together with the fact mm, that this coming year you're going to have to come up with trillions of dollars to service debt throughout Europe and the United States as well, and Europe and England. Uh, that it, it's totally unpayable. Is uh, The only way you could do it is just keep on printing money to buy bonds. Mm-hmm. And so uh, this is why it's such an important event because once Greece leaves, which I think they will, uh, one way or the other by March, uh, and they'll be followed by Ireland and Portugal and then Belgium. They'll try to bail out uh, Spain and Italy. They don't have the money to do it. They're mm-hmm. going to have to let them go. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and the thing is, you know, where really is the solution to all this? There isn't any. There's no way out except purging the system. Okay. And they'll do that sooner or later when they're forced to. They'll go to hyperinflation first in all those entities. <clears throat> and once inflation's over 50%, which it will probably be in two or three years, uh, then the whole thing collapses and goes into deflationary de- depression, like we saw during the 1930s in the United States. And that's where this is all headed. There's nothing they can do to change it. They can delay it, but mm-hmm. that's all they can do because they just create more debt, debt relieving debt. That doesn't solve anything. I mean, look at in America. Real unemployment is still 22.6%. It, it has relatively changed in the last eight or ten months. 
And these people in Washington telling us, oh, G3 dropped, uh, U3 dropped from 9 to 8.6%. But they didn't tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because there were almost 400,000 people who dropped out of the workforce. So don't count them anymore. Isn't that convenient? <laughs> now we got one, U, one, two, three, four, five, and you add them all up and you get U6. Mm -hmm. That's 16 and 5 eighths, 16 and 3 eighths percent. But that's all those numbers and all those people put together. But there's a thing called the birth death ratio birth of, of businesses and death of businesses. Mm -hmm. the, the government guesses at it. And they guess in their own favor every month, making up more jobs that don't exist. Mm -hmm. So all the figures are bogus. So if you, re, if you deduct that, you come up with 22.6%. Hmm. You know, and the thing about the whole thing is, is that, you know, it seems the American public becomes more privy to what all this is. And, and you say to yourself, okay, so what then can we do about it, you know, over time? I mean, how can we really change what's happening here? Well, you're going to have to face the same thing in America as England and Europe are going to face, and that is hyperinflation and eventually a collapse in the economy into deflationary depression. And, of course, that historically has always been accompanied by war, so you can expect that as well. Mm -hmm. But I think they're having a problem with the military because I'm getting reports and have been for a long time that uh, the best people in the military are saying, wait a minute, I mean, what are we here doing that for? And what are we doing that over there for? And so on and so forth. They're very ha unhappy about what they've had to do in Iraq and Afghanistan and other places where they've secretly gone in. And now they're trying to draw them into Syria and, uh, and Iran. And they don't like it. I mean, they want to protect America. They want to be good Americans. They want to be good soldiers. But they're having a hard time doing that when the wars are either created to make money or they're created to cause a diversion mm -hmm. into the, from the real problems, which are monetary and, and financial. So this is where the whole thing's headed. If you're patient, you know, you, you'll get to see it. And there is one exception, well, actually two, two exceptions here. And we do stand a chance. And what do we do? Well, the first one is you elect Barn Paul and people like him to run our country. And if you do not do that, you're duck soup. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Because he understands all the problems and he knows how to fix them. Over in Europe, uh, there's a person you've never heard of before, head of the National Front, a woman named Marine Le Pen. And uh, I've known Maureen since she was in her late teens. And I know the family very well. And uh, she is the head of the National Front running for the presidency. Uh, they vote in May and then in June. And I think she'll come in either, uh, probably in second place. And that puts her in the final. I think she can win the election. And what does she want to do? Get rid of the euro, get rid of the European Union, and get rid of the illegal aliens running around Europe. <laughs> and so if you can get those two elected, uh, we get real stuff going on. And that's our only chance. If we don't do that, we're doomed. Mm -hmm. Because they want, they, the government, the people who control the government, want the military to go out and round us up and put them, us in camps. Now, how do I know that? Because in the military appropriations bill last week, it said that everybody in America can be treated as a terrorist that they think they are, and they can be incarcerated and never heard from again. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, I know. There's a, a friend of mine who talks this way, and some people say, oh, you know, you guys are just getting a paranoid alarmist uh, position. I say, but, you know, when you really take a look at what's going on, uh, you know, and it may not be, it never happens until it happens to you, you know, it's a lot more alarming than you think. We've actually had author E.B. Griffiths on our program the Creature of, Je uh, of Jekyll Island was uh, the book that he was known well for, for written. And you read it and you go, but I don't understand, you know, really what is the point of these people thinking that this is a direction they need to go? You know, uh, you know uh, it's about control, but you have to say to yourself, 
But what's the point of it? What do they truly really have to gain? And what happens with each generation? You know, how does it continue to be perpetuated? Through the Federal Reserve. Mm-hmm. And, and so robbing the, the people next thing. of the world. What do you do about that? You know, you do away with it. Mm-hmm. You send that job back to the, uh, the Treasury Department where it was in the first place before the Federal Reserve Act was instituted in 1913. Incidentally, G. Edward Griffiths been a friend of mine since 1964. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, have probably recommended his book enough times for him probably to sell a couple of million of them. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, uh, that's the the first thing you do, and uh, the second thing you do is do away with the president's working group and financial markets. Now I can bet 99% of the the listeners never heard of that. Mm-hmm. Well, what it was was an executive order put in after the collapse of October the 19th, 1987, in the stock market. Ronald Reagan signed it in August of the following year, so that if we had a panic again, government could step in legally, because they had stepped in previously illegally, and they could try to stop the carnage that was going on in the markets. Well, what they've done is they've used this via government, uh, through the New York Fed, the Federal Reserve, uh, the uh, SEC, the CFTC, and the Treasury Department to, ma- uh, to manipulate every market in the world 24-7. Mm-hmm. So you don't have any free markets anymore, and that's got to be stopped. Mm-hmm. And I'm a market person from 53 years ago, mm-hmm. and so I know what I'm talking about. The ability to raise capital will end once the majority of the public finds out what's going on. Mm-hmm. So we've got to stop it. And then the only one that will do it is Ron Paul. Mm-hmm. Now, what makes it different with him versus the presidents that we've had before? Uh, you know, people actually seem to get to a point of apathy where they feel it really doesn't matter who's in office. You know, things really aren't going to change. Uh, but, you know, is it, uh, this is really possible that this one person can do this. Well, uh, first of all, the only other president that attempted it was Jack Kennedy, and he's dead. Mm-hmm. And we know why and who. Uh, second of all, Ron Paul knows that they'll try to kill him. But he's been willing to sacrifice his life, seeing him asked. And I, that's been discussed in order to try to make this thing work the way it should work. And the reason that all of the others in term, the Carters and the Clintons and the Bushes and so on, have been able to function that the way that they do, that they belong to the same groups and want world government. Mm-hmm. Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberger Group, and the list goes on and on and on. They're all in, con- interconnected. They're all criminals. None of them ever go to jail. The worst thing that ever happens to them is they get a fine. And they're the people who are running the country from behind the scenes. And these presidential candidates and 95% of Congress are bought and paid for by these people. That's why we can't get anything accomplished. So we have to get Ron Paul and people like him elected. Mm -hmm. If it does not happen, you're going to have revolution in the United States. Mm -hmm. Well, we can certainly feel that that's going on now. Well, let's hope it stays at the level it's at because... You, you don't want to be in a real revolution. <laughs> exactly. Now, tell us about your website where people can find out more about this. As you said, this is a newsletter that you produce, uh, produce twice a week, uh, you know, highly informative, very in-depth, um, you know, and you can certainly see by what you've written that, you know, this is what's been going on. Well, the International Forecaster is about business, finance, economic, social, and political issues all over the world. We published by email on Wednesdays and Saturdays, runs around 35 or 40 pages each time. We have a hard copy that goes out twice a month for those who are not on the Internet. And everything that you need to know every week is in that publication. You can get a free introductory copy by going to theinternationalforecaster.com. Mm-hmm. The International, F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R.com. You can also go to www.int f o r e c a s t e r dot com int forecaster dot com and for those of you who'd like to ask a question, we answer everyone or get a copy of a report or get a copy of our latest report in gold and silver shares. All you have to do is email us. Mm-hmm. That address is bob b o b 
at intforecaster.com. dot com. Bob at intforecaster.com. And for those of you who would like to call toll free, that number is eight seven seven four seven nine eight one seven eight. That's eight seven seven four seven nine eight one seven eight. And you can get either copy there. And for those of you who want to become subscribers, they offer a special deal there where you can get a free one-year subscription. Look into it. The deal that they're offering is terrific. Very good. Bob, I'd like to you know, have the opportunity to revisit this again. Um, you know, Obviously, things seem to uh, at times change on the dime, but what we try to do uh, in producing our program is to show you know, the reality of what's going on and what can be done about it. And, you know, uh, as you've said consistently through the show, one of the ways is, you know, hopefully we can get Ron Paul elected. I've heard quite a bit about that, um, you know, uh, when it comes to that direction. It would just be nice, I think, for a lot of people to say, you know, we work hard for a standard of life, and I think that happens with a lot of people worldwide you know, and uh, you get a little fed up when you do that, and then somebody decides, well, we know what's best for you, and they try to take that away from you, and, and it's certainly time to stop doing that.